This video is also in an article form for those who like reading. I've been using assertions on all types of programs for a while now, and they have increased the level of quality and reliance of my software, especially in unsafe languages like C, which allow you to do dumb stuff and offer no safety net. And recently I've been doing a ton of game development in Godot, mainly in C++ with GD extensions. And I found assertions to be even more powerful than in systems programming, since writing tests is not as easy in game development. For those who don't know, the concept behind assertions is very simple. You have a condition that should always be true, so you assert that this is the case. It's equivalent to an if statement where if something is true, you explode. Putting them into practice though is a bit harder. A lot of developers have used them in production for reliable software that usually should never crash. For example, aerospace and safety critical systems, operating system kernels, database systems, among others. The reason why assertions are used in this kind of reliable systems is the belief that failing fast is safer than continuing with corrupted state. I've gotten a lot of arguments against assertions in production in games. The first one, everyone hates games that crash, is funny because the games that don't use assertions in production are usually the ones that crash the most because they usually don't test invalid state. Imagine a game where an enemy AI holds a reference to the player but doesn't check if the player entity is still valid. What happens without assertions? The player dies response at checkpoint, enemy updates, reads target get position from zeroed memory, enemy AI moves towards 000 or some weird random spot, player opens inventory, game crashes in the inventory rendering code, completely unrelated. Then you receive a bug report from a player saying their game crashed when they opened their inventory. How do you debug this? Now imagine you have an assertion that checks the player is not an old pointer and is alive. This not only sets your world B of the game state very clearly, but also helps you find this bug yourself in development before it even reaches the user. And if it ever does, the user will have a clear error message when the game crashes. Bugs are inevitable, so why bother? This one is the most stupid one I've gotten. It's like saying accidents are inevitable, so why bother with seatbelts? All games have bugs, that's true, but the point of assertions isn't to eliminate bugs, but to control when and where they explode, as well as letting the person reading your code know that, hey, X should never happen as a comment that holds true for the entirety of the program. Without assertions, bugs follow the path of least resistance. Here, we return null in get equipped weapon due to some edge case. Then, we access the get damage function, which might or might not suck fault depending on the amount of padding behind the pointer. And if it does not, then we get a random number. With assertions, we fail as soon as this world view does not hold true, and we give context to the developer or the user instead of a suck fault. Once again, you would probably catch this through development. Thanks to asserting a valid state, you're notified immediately when your assumption is incorrect, and not at 5am through an email when everything is crashing and burning. Performance overhead, another great one. Thanks to modern compilers and branch prediction, your code will generally compile to something like this, which basically tells your CPU, hey, it's very improbable this ever holds true. And since our assertion shouldn't fail, with a modern CPU's branch prediction, the overhead is minimal. However, we need to account for cache behavior, which will be better or worse depending on how you keep your data. This is why ECS are so powerful. Since assertions often check variables that may not be in the L1 cache, we are assuming an average of 20 nanoseconds per assertion. So if your frame budget is of 5 milliseconds, aka 200 FPS, you'd need to execute 50,000 assertions per frame to consume 1 millisecond of your entire budget. And this is a conservative case, so I wouldn't worry much about using them extensively. Let's talk about the fun part, usage. The most basic and used assertion is the no assertion which, of course, asserts that whatever you're given is not null. I usually create my own assertion abstraction on whatever language I'm using, so here I would use my assert not null function. This assertion is often compared to the defensive programming equivalent, but the main problem with that approach is the silent fail, and sure, you could log the error, but what for when you could just assert it? Then you have the unreachable assertion, which can be used for exhaustive checks for switch statements, for example. Here we check the movement state enum, and if it isn't any of the ones we have, we assert it. This one is one of the safest assertions to make, since there should never be a point in time where this happens. And if it happens, it's definitely a bug. Again, in my case, I have an assert that unreachable function to keep it clean. One type of assertion I learned recently is the implies assertion. Imagine, for example, you have a load level system where the player 
has to go sequentially through each level. Then you can assert the previous level was completed. So if level is higher or equal than one, assert that level minus one is completed. This goes with one of the rules of Tiger style. Not just assert what should happen, but also the negative space that you don't expect, which is extremely powerful and that's where interesting bugs can show up. For example, if players ever find a way to skip levels in speedruns and you don't want this to happen, by asserting you set a roadblock to players trying to bug your game. Same thing applies if we want to remove quest items. For example, if the item you want to remove is a quest item, then assert that the quest is completed. This is what I meant by failing fast is safer than continuing with corrupted state. If we remove the quest item by this point, the user wouldn't be able to complete the quest and they would probably have to reset the save if the quest was important. Where maybe restarting the game would fix that invalid state or at least they would be able to report it. The out of bounds assertion is very useful in items in your games or data structures you created. Like here, for getting an item at a certain slot and checking that the index is between the bounds of the program. Whenever I get worried I'm adding way too many assertions in a function, I think about yet another rule of the holy tiger style. Assert all function arguments, return values, preconditions, and invariants. On average, there should be at least two assertions per function. And when I look back, I'm usually doing this already. Another rule I like in tiger style assertions is instead of adding a comment on top of a function, in this case saying that auto save points must always be safe, I add an assertion making sure that that stands true 100% of the time. And finally, I'm gonna talk about the sign by contract assertions, which basically states that contracts should always have two parties. So we have to assert at both the call side and definition side. Even when both assertions look identical, they form an error lock. You can verify each side independently as long as the assertion between them are compatible. This one is really powerful as well and will help you catch bugs early whenever you have systems that interact, which makes refactoring feel so much safer. Some assertion techniques are harder than others, and effectively adding assertions to an existing codebase is pretty hard, especially if it is not yours. For assertions in production, you should be 100% confident that the property will hold, meaning you have to check all the state that reaches this point and make sure your condition holds true 100% of the time. If you're not sure this is true, then leave it as a to-do. For debug assertions, aim for at least 90% confidence. If assertions don't already exist in the codebase or other developers don't follow the practice, then it's better to only add debug assertions on that project. Only assert properties guaranteed by code you control. Don't assert user input like keyboard mouse, data from network requests for multiplayer games. Use error handling and login instead, since of course you can't guarantee this. Even though I talked about assertions not costing much before, depending on what you want to assert, you should most likely have an assert.expensive function, which asserts really expensive stuff, like checking a certain set of mobs is alive, this of course if you're adding assertions to someone else's project. By this point you might have realized that apart from handling invalid state, a lot of language limitations or general language bad design can be addressed with assertions. For example, no safety, implications, exhaustive tie checks or unreachable state, bounce checking, rage constraints, numeric overflow under full detection, preconditions and post conditions, and more. So they allow you to use your favorite language and keep your program safe without needing extremely complex type systems. This is why I believe they are so important to learn and use well. They can take your software to a whole other level of reliability. Anyways, this was all for assertions in game dev. Huge thanks to all my supporters. Consider supporting the channel if you enjoy this type of content and see you later.